Welcome to Breaking Barriers with Art. This is Jocelyn, your host, and this is part of the Spotlight series on Kix VS, the voice of Stockton. Um, just to cover a few administrative things first while we're checking the sound here. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for boarding, David. Awesome. Um, so I know that some of you have questions about, you know, being a member of KXVS. When one of the things you can do is go on to the website at www.kxvs.org, and you'll find all kinds of information there on the different tiers, membership tiers, and um, any general information all there for you. So I usually read something super long, typical t uh, boilerplate stuff, but now I'm just going to say go to kxvs.org and find all that membership information there and join us. So, um, like I said, this is Breaking Barriers with Art, and I'm your host, Jocelyn, and it's part of the Spotlight on the Art series. I, my team of two other people, joinees, comes on on Mondays from, well, during the lunch hour, noon to one, and then David is here on Fridays from noon to one as well. So our guest today, like I said, is Kristen Reniker. She is with Jagged Lines of Imagination Academy. They are located at the Teen Impact Center um, close to the downtown area at 725 North El Dorado Street. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Teen Impact Center, it's pretty close to downtown area, and um, JLI is located within there. Um, I first met Kristen a few years ago. Actually, it's been a couple of years now, um, doing the Wish Flags project. And if any of you remember, that was where would go out and um, create wish flags. Uh, we would set up uh, booths at different events and we'd create this activity for the youth where they can talk about what they would like to see, any improvements in their community or anything that they would, anything that they want to wish for. Um, that was actually pretty cool when we even learned how to create the stamps to imprint those images on the wish flags. And so, I've got Kristen here. We're gonna try. We're gonna catch up with her and talk about the uh, the Impact Center and um, JLI. Also, a few activities and events that are coming up. Um, Jagged Lines usually has an activity area at Stockton Con, so we're gonna talk about that and what they do there. So, thank you for stopping by during the lunch hour, Kristen. Well, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> and um, yeah, just just. Tell us a little bit about what's been going on at JLI and uh, some of the things that are coming up. Well, how far back do you want <laughs> I know, me? right? I, know. <laughs> I went pretty far back, though. <laughs> well, JLI is 11 years old now um, and started back in 2006. Our founder, John Gerzon, just this amazing person, and that's why JLI is an amazing place, because of him. He's both a teacher, a really qualified teacher and, and, and he has that magic creativity that a good teacher has and partly he has it because he's an artist as well and he in Stockton was just teaching K through 12 but he thought you know art classes and this was back in no child left behind so no child gets in art class times and he started an after-school art program called it Jagged Lines of Imagination and it was just a little private effort he was all alone doing that. He had um, House of Doodle helping him, Alexis Villanueva, awesome. and that was it. Yeah, yeah. I remember meeting John years ago when I was working at the Mountain House Library, and he had a quick little class there, and uh, actually taught my daughter how to do uh, anime and, and believe manga. And I asked her recently, do you still have that piece that John taught you how to make? And she's like, no, I just recently, just, she literally just tossed it like a couple months ago while cleaning her room. So kind of bummed, but anyway, yeah, that's how I, that's how I met him. But anyway. Well, I, I met him because I retired and I said to myself, what do I want to do? You know, what's on the bucket list? Take an art class. And yeah. John's yeah. classes, although they're an after school program, they're for all ages. And yes. that's, that's a key element that we've always kept because it's really fun. I walked into that class and it was me, a retired old woman, and two little boys. Oh. And <laughs> they How stepped fun. up and they showed me around and you know just treated me like their old grandmother, I guess. And oh, we started sweet. to have so much fun. Now all these years later one of those young men is graduating from Delta College. Yeah. So it's been a while and the um, 
Jagged Lines has moved three times since then and become a nonprofit. And then after we became a nonprofit, I sort of moved into more an administrative role, and I'm still a student. But, always um, a student. That's we we found it. that was yeah. impractical, that we were <laughs> spending more time doing administration than art. And so that's when we moved over to um, the Teen Impact Center. And mm -hmm. I have to give a big shout out to the Family Resource and Referral Center. Um, Teen Center is a public-private um, partnership. The public part is the city of Stockton owns that building. And the mm -hmm. city of Stockton has put a lot of money and a lot of effort into it, but they've made a contract with the Family Resource and Referral to run it, and that's what keeps the doors open. Yeah. That's what allows people to go in there and have a lot of fun. And Right, right. It's good that you've got that, like you were saying, that administrative end of it to cover all that other stuff while everyone else focuses on the main, the good, the other good stuff. Yeah, and programming, yeah. of course, that's what makes it fun to go in there. So there's a basketball court, and it doesn't need too much programming. It needs a bunch of <laughs> basketballs. Um, but there's a dance room, and so they've done Aikido classes in there, and they've done... Um, jazzercise and, uh -huh. uh, and all kinds of different physical classes in there they've got a lounge where you don't have to do any physical work at all <laughs> um, you get to just lounge around there's a stage too i remember seeing that there's actually yeah. two stages oh, in nice. there it is it's just got what you need to be a very flexible place there's a computer lab upstairs there's a conference room and there was a little unfinished area at the outside which when I went and talked to Kay Rustaller about it and explained our situation that we want to do ours, but we need a roof over our heads, <laughs> um, she said, okay. Nice. And that just made all the difference. Makes it, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Instead of charging for our classes, all the classes are free now, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, That's awesome. Another shout out to Leslie Reese, who is the most overworked human on the planet <laughs> and was when I met her and Kay turned to her and said, you can handle this, can't you, Leslie? No problem, she said. Um, and she's gave, given up sleeping, I think, in I've order to bring free art classes to the city of Stockton and the surrounding area. It's open to everybody. We really love to see teens in there because then they're going to go ahead and use the rest of the facility. Um, That's but, great. That I was under the impression that it was only open to like Stockton Unified School District or something like that. But it's it's well, see because like for example the community that I live in in Weston Ranch they are Manteca Unified and I don't even think they know well not a lot of them know about the Teen Impact Center so it's good we're getting it out there you know we want them <laughs> we want them and we have things for them to do yeah. and, and yeah. it's um, open afternoons only and it's open Tuesday through Saturday. Um, but that's when the kids can come in. So mm -hmm. what's the point mm -hmm. of having it open when it's just using energy? So right, we, right. we try to have it open when they can come and have a lot of activities for them to do. There's the um, Teen Leadership Council. Mm -hmm. or teen, Yeah, Teen Leadership Council is part of the Teen Impact Center. And they are also, this is part of the public-private partnership, they are also a commission for the city of Stockton, right. They're an official yeah. commission. Those kids who are on it are volunteers and they are sworn in mm -hmm. and they follow all the rules and they work with the city to get things done. That's great. Those are our future leaders right there. Uh, they're and, leading and right now. I've, I've met them and they are awesome kids. They, they really, really are. are great kids. So And hardworking. Hardworking. Oh, Thank heavens yeah. for the rest of us that they do that. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that there's some um, workshops coming up let's let's talk about that okay but not yet not yet not yet first i want to talk about stockton Con. okay let's talk about stockton Con. We, we're going to do these in chronological order and okay stockton Cron. Con is just two weeks away less than two weeks okay. away so okay. um jli has been involved with stockton con from the very beginning i keep see i have a staff t-shirt um from the very beginning when they were at uop oh yeah we were there. Yeah, I was there too. And the <laughs> line that wrapped around the building, I think it was the first or second year. I could not believe it. I'm like, you know what? They're going to have to find a bigger venue. This is just not going to work. All our meetings beforehand, we're going, <laughs> boy, I hope we get 500 people. <laughs> oh, no. Now it's like, yeah, above and yeah. beyond that. We got 5,000. Uh, yeah. So yeah. It, it's, it's just been a wonderful thing. I mean, if you haven't been there, come. You will have fun. It, all you have to do is 
open your eyes and watch because the cosplay rules oh, yeah. at Stockman Con. Definitely. It's just wonderful. And that's one of the first things that JLI was involved in and remains involved in, all the participatory arts. There's lots of stuff for sale at Stockton Con. There's lots of stuff to just see, mm-hmm. to watch. But there's stuff to do also. And cosplay is a big one. Anybody can do it. You mm-hmm. put on a costume, you show up. Um, and then you get your picture taken. <laughs> yeah, that's the fun part, too. And there's a contest. There's, in fact, two contests for cosplay, an adult and a kid. Mm -hmm. And then we have the kids' drawing area, which is where the Teen Leadership Council is going to – they began last year to run that for us. Very good. Started out, it was John Gerzon, and Mm -hmm. he did just Mm draw-alongs. But then that wasn't really what we wanted. We wanted a place where people just – they get tired and they want to sit down and they want to do it now. They don't want to wait for the next session to start. Mm -hmm. That's so awful. So um, John designed – how to draw your own comic in six steps and he's created posters and we have those six steps set up at different tables and you can come by and do one step and then you can come back and do another step nice. or you could do no steps just draw what you <laughs> want or you could do all the steps so you can spend a whole half a day with us if you want and here's one of my big announcements and only those of you who are watching live now you're, you <laughs> will be the first to know that special guest at the kids drawing area this year will be john gerzon Yay. he's going to be with us throughout the whole of stockton con he's going to be in the kids drawing area and he's going to be surprise surprise showing you how to make your own comic mm-hmm. so it's going to be a really fun opportunity to sit down with a real artist and john is a professional artist yeah, he's, he's been doing he's, this for quite some time and I mean, it's he, how he makes his living yeah so he's moved up to sacramento now but he does still come by and he still supports jli and and keeps me going Good to have <laughs> and him there, i then. keep him going but we're really excited that he's going to be back for the weekend nice nice so um, so i'm going to go stop by your booth over there on I, i'm actually there both saturday and sunday so i'll stop by and see what's going on while you guys are at it's not even a booth. It's kind of like tables. It's, it's, it's like a whole big area. Five or six tables. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's an activity. It's not a yeah. booth. There's nothing yeah. to buy. Everything is free in there. We just invite you to come on in, yeah. and we'll have materials, and we'll have fun. I know. It's one of the things that it's like, I think that's the only activity that I remember being there one time. I mean, like you said, a lot of it is mostly vendors and people selling stuff. And Well, the for the cosplayers, activity? that's the activity. Right, right. But for the rest of us drawing is really fun we do have uh, an exhibit on the uh, upstairs in the fun deck Mm -hmm. the tony de zuniga memorial art um, exhibit and this is the sixth year for that it's really exciting because it's going to be a retrospective so we're going to see art that has been submitted to that exhibit for six years now and tony de zuniga Tony's Tina DeZuniga, Tony's widow, Mm -hmm. has agreed to provide some original art. So this year the exhibit will include Tony's art also, uh, as well as all his wannabes. And (laughs) that is really fun. That's something we hope everybody will stop by um, to see. Mm -hmm. And the final piece that we do at Stockton Con, and again, this is an announcement, this is an invitation, is that we have two tables within Artist Alley. Artist Alley is where artists peddle their wares. Mm -hmm. And that can be a little intimidating. And also a lot of people don't have a lot of art, but they have some art and they'd like to try selling. So those two tables are the young artists selling tables. Mm -hmm. And they are available for anyone who would like to come in and sell some art or at least try. Oh, nice. Um, Since we only have two tables, we ask that people sign up. In fact, you need to sign up with us because, of course, you want to bring your stuff in the back through the vendor's area, and, and we will help do all of that for any young artist who would like to spend a couple of hours or half a day How setting fun. up their art, talking to the crowds, seeing if they can sell something. Young and entrepreneurs and artists. Good combo. <laughs> it's Well, it's, it's a really great footstep before you invest and devote yourself to having your own booth. Yes. But, of course, yeah. that's the step. If you're going to sell art, you got to sell your art. Yeah. So we try to help people get started along that path if they, or at least find out if it's 
the path for them. Yeah, yeah. So that's our Stockton Con plans, and we're going to have a really big weekend, and we hope everybody here will yeah, come yeah. out and have a big weekend I with know. us. So once again, this is my guest, Kristen Renneker. She's with Jagged Lines of Imagination Academy. They're lo- located within the Teen Impact Center, and you can find a lot of their information at jliacademy.org. And you'll also find their workshop schedule there, which we'll be talking about once we come back from break in a few minutes. Um, So uh, we're going to take a real quick break. Let's see if I can get Dustin in here. Well, actually, no, he's still out there looking at his cell phone. So, (laughs) um, but anyway, yeah, Stockton Con is happening, what, August 19th? No, 19th 20th. 20th. Right, and then at the arena, at the arena, which is a huge step from what it was like years and years ago. What was the first one like six, what, ten years ago, maybe? No, no, this is our sixth year. The sixth year, okay. But just read in the paper today, you get all kinds of good news in the Stockton Record if you take it. Um, free rides on the public transport on on the buses if you're in the cosplay. So there's a, yet oh, another I, I saw reason that, actually, yeah. to g- dress up. That's for Stockton Con. That's you neat. put on a costume, you get a free ride, and, and the parking can be a bit of a, pick, a pill. You know, yeah, there's pain. a lot of people there, yeah. and it's expensive. And Parking's kind of, yeah, unless you, you park across the way, there's a, a lot across the way that you can also park. Yeah. A lot of people are kind of like, oh, I don't want to park there. But, I, you know, I actually tried getting dressed and, and cosplay, but, wow, middle of August, <laughs> with all of that, the things that I thought that I was going to wear, all of the different accessories, I just thought, and the wig and everything else, I'm like, nope. Last minute I said, <laughs> nope, not going to do it because it is freaking hot right now. But, yeah. Well. I, it, it, it's nice it, to see everybody really get into it. And once it. you get inside, yeah. you just won't want to leave. That's because true. It's, it, That's true. But, yeah, it, it always happens in August, and it's always hot. Yeah. But, yeah. You, and walking you, from where your car is from point A to point B into the arena. And like, you're just dripping. But Yeah, you're drenched by the time you get there. Some of the costumes. Really They're pretty amazing. Awesome. Yeah, I, they I, are I awesome. commend the, the, the time and effort that some of these people are putting towards their costumes. Some of them are really, really int- intricate. And some of them are just a cape. But <laughs> it's art. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's absolutely. body art, I guess. But absolutely. Especially the ones who have built their own costumes from scratch you look at them and you can't believe that that's just hand made. i know <laughs> i know whoa what what skill what what effort yeah yeah I, actually if you want we can yeah you talk about that real quick and so i i brought back. along my my mask and and this is a full helmet mask so it i was gonna i can't hand it to most anybody to wear because it was built on my head Oh, okay. And I have a little pea brain. I'd probably rip it apart. So I'm going to take my old. thing and just put them on for a minute. Okay. And Kristen told me this, this is all made with recycled, recycled oh, materials, yeah. every, which every is bit of it. Manila folders, staples, uh, staples. This what is else? just an old piece of cloth that I had, tissue paper, and a lot of Mod Podge. <laughs> a lot of Mod Podge. That's our favorite thing to use is Mod Podge. But what's, Podge. what's fun about this mask, it's, it's pretty big. It, it probably weighs a pound. Oh, yeah. It yeah. weighs nothing. So right. it, for, speaking <laughs> of hot days, yeah. and it, it, this took about two hours to make. Yeah, one year, I was just telling Kristen earlier, I went to this, uh, it was kind of like a a pub crawl, but the theme was like Santa and Christmas, and it was, you know, during the holidays. I thought I'd go as Vixen, and I put together this paper mache big horns, and I think it weighed like about 500 pounds, and in the end, I decided, nah, not going to work. I couldn't even get in my car. I was like driving like this. (laughs) So I took it off at the last minute. But anyway, um... So when we come back, we'll talk more about the workshops that are coming up. And we've got Dustin in here now. Hi, Dustin. (laughs) And we'll see you guys after a real quick break. Thank you.
Welcome back. I'm your host, Jocelyn, here with Breaking Barriers with Art, part of the Spotlight on the Art series at KXCS.org, The Voice of Stockton. And our guest today is Kristen Renneker with Jagged Lines of Imagination. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. So now, you know what, we were talking, on, well, on break, we were talking about the different workshops that are coming up. So it'd be nice for her to be able to elaborate. And then after that, maybe we'll bring up some questions from uh, some of the folks that are tuned in. And I've got like a few of them that I, I'm pretty sure Kristen can answer. <laughs> All right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. Okay. So yeah, let's start with some of those workshops. Workshops. We, we try to offer a whole variety of workshops whenever, what? Whenever we have money for them. <laughs> so um, we're lucky enough to have a nice grant from the Stockton Arts Commission that is allowing us to offer uh, two sets of workshops this fall. One is on watercolor techniques, and one is things to do with paper and glue. And each of those workshops will be a three-session series. Uh, not to be intimidating, you can come to any one. You don't have to come to all of them. Uh, but at the same time, we're trying to design that little series so that the things you learn on the first workshop will mm -hmm. be useful to you in the second even though you'll be fine in the second if you haven't come to the first and the same with the third we want to give people who want to devote themselves and really learn a series they'll come away with something pretty good we think and um, everybody will have fun so our watercolor techniques we've got a little model and he's a gentleman named John Muir Laws who teaches um, watercolor journaling oh nice and he is amazing he's got a website and anybody who's interested should check him out but he likes to talk about just how do we do this what do you what do i do and how can you try that too and everything is trying it trying it trying it rather than copying mm -hmm. it's just try this technique on your own picture so one of the things he taught us to do is how to really make a great watercolor palette for yourself mm -hmm. by buying tubes. I never knew this. You can buy tubes of watercolor paint, put it in the palette, let it dry. Bingo. You have a watercolor palette. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we can buy very expensive watercolor, which we're going to do, and have really top quality. And that, surprisingly, makes a huge difference mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your success as a watercolor painter is the quality of the material you use. Right, right. Even the paper. I know the paper makes a huge, huge. difference when it comes so to watercolor. People, you know, you, you're at home, and you have your little school kid stuff, and you <laughs> fiddle around with it, and you're having a good time, yeah. but you can never get quite the results that you see online. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to let people work with the real materials and you will find different results. Will you become an expert in three workshop? No. But right. you'll have an experience that allows you to grow. Right. That. So even if, you know, definitely if you're a beginner, definitely check it out because you're going to learn a whole ton a more whole things, lot. like a whole lot more things. Um, that's going to be in September, set of three. And then in October, we're going to do a set of three things to do with paper and glue and it really is designed around some basic basic skills folding creasing cutting <laughs> and gluing now that sounds simplistic mm -hmm. and it is but we're going to make fun things that way and we're going to be able to use this exact materials that you would have at home and we're going to go through these in a very slow way so that it isn't a make and take where you spend some time with us and you go home with something and go, I really like this, but a lot of it happened behind the scenes mm -hmm. and you can't do it yourself. You're going to do every single step yourself and you're going to not only be able to repeat anything that we did in any of these workshops, but you're going to say, hey, if you can do this one thing, I bet you can do this other. Right, right. And we're going to get into that most important ingredient for being a successful creative person solving problems <laughs> because your life is nothing but problems and art is nothing but problems and you <laughs> figure out a way to solve them so that brings me back to this crazy mask this is the third workshop and so i said oh you can do this in two hours well you can but it uses a lot of creasing and cutting and folding techniques so if you've had a lot of practice with that already you're going to go a lot faster 
you start with just floppy old paper and you have the papers falling all over everywhere and you think that is not going to be anything but within two hours it turns into a quite an elaborate mask yeah, yeah. weighs nothing very useful we're going to show you one that doesn't have this problem that you can only wear it if it's built on oh, your head oh yeah we're Something going to show you one more, that more anybody adjustable. can wear um, yeah. so we solved that problem how did you do that I'm not telling tell now us, you got to come to our workshop yeah. Well, we're, we're just going to add a little opening here with some That's elastic. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Bing. And, and so everything's going to change in order to allow that to happen, but it's going to be even easier. Okay, so what materials did you use on there? You said um, manila, um, uh, manila folders. Manila folders. And, and, um, that looks like tape or masking tape. Is that masking tape on the other, on the exterior where it's all painted? No, this is um, Mod Podge little triangles of material that I had okay and you, this is paper towels here oh wow this is tissue paper so it's whatever you got around right, right. it just has to be very soft mm -hmm. and absorbent and the Mod Podge is yeah. basically applied and it just hardens yeah and um, this is just uh, decorated with sharpies I could do a lot more and I think I will it's it's a very forgiving thing. When I began to build this, this was going to be clown mask, <laughs> and it had a big. I bet clown spike. masks are going to be really popular here when Stephen King's new movie comes out. I know, <laughs> but animals go. are really fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I had big spikes on them that were green and yellow, and I thought, no, I kind of like these ears. They look like a an animal, so I ripped those off and turned them into teeth. And awesome. I, you know, you just. You could do all kinds of stuff. It's with that. so fun. We're going to make fidget spinners. I was looking at them in the I'm first. Like, Hmm. And they're they're primarily an origami folding technique, but then you add an axle. Okay. And the whole idea of what an axle is, once you get that, oh wow! Now, if you buy an expensive fidget spinner, it's going to have all more. It's going to have weights, and it's going to have a bearing. Mm -hmm. Nah, we don't need that. We're mm -hmm. going to make quickie fun so that you can give them to your friends, and you can make a whole bunch, and yeah, you can have different cool. colors, and there's whole different kinds. And then we're going to, the second one, we're going to start working more with glue and tabs, and we're going to make flex tangles. <laughs> flex tangles, wow. <laughs> they are so fun. We're going to make <laughs> things that work, you know, things that you can yeah. move and play with after you've finished making them. And that's going to really set you up for the mask making, the third, um, although the same as the watercolor. You can just come to one. Yeah. Yeah, because we know not everyone can make that big commitment. Um, now it says on the flyer that I'm looking at here is space is limited, and reservations are advised. Now just keep in mind it's not happening until next month and October, but but we have one if, space taken. <laughs> yeah, reservations. If if somebody wants to make the reservations, how would they uh, do that? The best way to make a reservation is to call the number. Right give now. us a call. Okay. Um, 382 7848 mm -hmm. 38 art for you 38 art for you 382 7848 so if you're interested in making reservations for it's these are all free workshops by the way for those that are wondering they are there's no charge for them so you've got your materials you've got your workspace and um, it's over there at the Teen Impact Center at 725 North El Dorado Street so Definitely encourage, and it's all ages. All ages. This is these are going to be um, ten and up. What we're going to be doing is really not going to be appropriate for children yeah, under that's ten. Yeah, be and a little bit too elaborate for them. They they wouldn't have fun. <laughs> yeah, and and they'd be in the way. So, <laughs> so we're going to say that those those kids who are under ten, we do have classes. We have classes every week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, four to six thirty usually two classes on each of those days and those are also free and especially on Tuesdays the class is really oriented for younger children now anybody under 10 who shows up has to be with an adult and the adult sure. has to stay with them but sure. I should have a couple of my adults here because they end up having as much fun as the kids we truly encourage oh heck yes <laughs> not to sit there and play on your phone right. i'm talking to you moms right. now right. but to play with the art so now we have um, mothers who come in with their kids and sit their kid down and go 
don't <laughs> bug me and they're doing the art <laughs> they're more involved in it so, that's great that's um, great you know i had some questions coming in i i asked a few people to see uh, if they questions can, what yeah, do we got questions let's see um this is from richie well most of these are so what are some of the goals that you set for artists who are beginners well, for all of our artists, our tagline is drawing out your character one scribble at a time. <laughs> and the pun is intended. Um, yeah. We start with and, and kind of focus on drawing and a lot of figure drawing. And so we hope that every artist will get a command of proportions that are correct human proportions and feel very confident about them and not use them but depart and be creative and draw out their own characters mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we do a lot of uh, we draw spider-man and we draw batman and we draw wonder woman and we draw them all but in the end we encourage our artists to use the skills we're practicing to do their own work uh, and i would think that's our goal is that each artist can really find their own ex thing I to just express. I just had one come in asking about um, the different artists. Do you have um, set artists that come in on a regular basis, or do you have guest artists that are from different areas? We Our regular classes are taught by the JLI lead artist team, and mm -hmm. they, uh, they set, set up a set of classes okay. so that it changes cool. from time to time our workshops are often guest artists okay okay great and then back to another question from richie back in the 80s and early 90s you didn't want to talk about this one. <laughs> oh, that's all right that is, that's okay it's that always right? interesting okay. okay back in the 80s and early 90s the building that you are in used to be a bowling alley and used to provide hours of fun and kept me out of trouble and looking at your schedule you're only open a few days are there any plans for exp extending the days you have open? That's a lot of questions right there. <laughs> okay, well, are there any plans to extend the days? No. no are there I any think... hopes to extend the day? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is something the city is really devoted to, and many of you will remember that the city is broke. Or, <laughs> you know, it's just a, a coming yeah. out of bankruptcy. Um, they have enough money to keep the doors open. But what we really want to do is open the doors a lot more and offer yeah. a lot more programming once you get inside the doors because we want to keep you out of busy uh, and keep you out of trouble and yeah. keep you busy so um, the art program for instance is entirely supported by grants and um, when the grants run out mm -hmm. the program runs out the program runs out so yeah. uh, and some and of then the you other, wait for next year to yeah, try for it again try yeah. again so we always are hoping that there will be some sponsorships that there are other sure. people in this town and companies that think yeah it's really worthwhile mm -hmm. to have good programming and we'll back that so we're looking for that um, and we're looking for that for a variety of programming within the Teen Impact Center, and we hope that over time there will be more hours. Uh, but right now, we don't have any way to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Stockton Arts Commission has been very generous with yeah. these workshops, and we have a grant from the state um, Cal Arts. Nice. Yeah. Are they their council, California mm -hmm. Arts mm -hmm. Council, and um, the federal money too? which luckily is still there. And that's what supports our regular class schedule and has last year and will this year. And our fingers are crossed nice, <laughs> for nice. how long that will go. We have a few more questions here, but I think we'll cover that on our next break when we come back in a few minutes. And then um, after, we'll probably just wrap up the show. So we'll see you in a few minutes. And uh, for more questions with Kristen. All right, I turned down a little bit. Okay, so I know...
so excited. My name is Josh, and you're listening to KXVS, the voice of Stockton, 92.1 FM. Hello, welcome back to Breaking Barriers with Art. I'm your host, Jocelyn Conde here, and I've got my guest, Kristen Renneker, with Jagged Lines of Imagination, uh, located in the Teen Impact Center uh, Breaking Barriers with Art is part of the Spotlight series, our lunch hour series here at KXVS.org, the voice of Stockton. So we're back. We've got more questions for you. Everybody's like interested in what, what's going on now. You know, Let's just on, on Rich's last question, it used to be a bowling alley. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually located exactly one block north of the Cesar Chavez Library. Yeah. So if you're visiting a library, just walk up the block. That's true. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's really a great location. I know there's lots of kids who are in school in the downtown area now. Mm-hmm. They're young. They can walk a couple blocks. They've got, if they can get to the library, they can get to the teen center. So. Yeah, they've got uh, several. I've got an office at Court Tower, and um, right next door there's a, a yeah. school for the elementary. It's like a charter school. Yeah. So... Um, okay, so the bowling alley. You are used to be a bowling alley. Kept me out of trouble. That's a, that's our goal. <laughs> no, no trouble. Well, now it's not a bowling alley, but it'll still keep you out of trouble. More so. <laughs> and the hours are actually geared, you know, for 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 after school. I mean, uh, what is it? Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, four to six thirty p.m. Well, that's the art studio. That's the, the art studio. The Teen Impact Center is open Tuesday through Saturday, um, three to eight. Nice. So it's open. So Somewhere. Sunday and Monday, it's not open, but every other day yeah. it is open. Um, and one of the things that really made Jagged Lines want to join in with yeah. the family resource and referral is that their philosophy and our philosophy are that this isn't about money. This is about um, involving people in something that will make their lives better and our lives better because their lives are better. Everything's mm-hmm. free. And that is a philosophy yeah. that the Family Resource and Referral has that they, and that's why we are looking for sponsors and looking for grants. And sure. we're doing that work because that's our philosophy. It's free. Mm-hmm. It's really important, especially around here because, you know, a lot of us are on tight budgets. And that's true. You don't have to be poor to be on a tight budget. Yeah, tight you budget. know what? <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Um, okay. Let's see. Question number three. I see there is a lot of anime drawings on your website. Is that some of the things that you teach to draw? This is actually this visual here on the bottom left panel are some of the artwork that's that they've uh, some of the students have done at JLI. That's my favorite right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. Yes. Um, we ha- the way we do our classes is that we have an inspiration mm-hmm. and um, that's what we're going to look at and in fact we are going to draw those characters although we're still going to push you to draw your own later but we pick as an inspiration something that the kids are going to be interested in we are a teen impact center and we're aimed at the teens and they love anime they love manga Manga. we also occasionally pick something that we think they ought to be interested in so we'll do some uh, throwback kind of stuff this one right here is print making and so that's Kubo and the Three Strings was mm. our inspiration. Um, but what we're doing is printmaking. So we have an inspiration and we have a, a, a materials and a projects that we're going to work on. Um, Pokemon, but the project <laughs> there was small sculpture. Oh, is that a sculpture? That is a small sculpture. Oh, very small. Um, that looked like a stuffed animal. No. <laughs> I mean, like legit stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't do That's sewing so yet. Uh, these are all oh, little, little so sculptures. Nice. They're, they're all, and some of them, you see, are not Pokemons because the kids came up with their own mm-hmm. projects. Um, those are some, it's a good selection. And they're such a good variety, too. And a, a lot of the time, our teachers pick 
an inspiration and work with that for several months. And then they pick a new inspiration and work with that for several months. And the kids are asked, you know, what, what are you interested in? So sometimes we introduce them the little witch academia, which when you see witches floating by, that's, mm. that's a fun anime that I never heard of until I took the class. Uh, but it's a really fun anime. That's awesome. We introduce that to the kids. In other ones, they introduce it back to us. They'll tell us something we never heard of and go look at it. Hey, it's appropriate. Let's that use one right it. there. Yeah. Oh, Which Undertale. On yeah, that's one of the ones the kids wanted <laughs> to do. Undertale. Let's see. The next question is, is there a cost to come to your, your, your workshop? There is not. No cost for the workshops. No cost for the classes. We provide the materials. Now, I'll tell you that a lot of people who take the classes are soon out buying their own mm -hmm. materials because they want to have them, mm -hmm. and they want their own sketchbook. And that's great. That's another reason why we don't charge, because we think you should go out and spend that money on your own yeah. materials that you're going to use. Um, but we have what you need, and it's that's a wonderful, the philosophy. It's a wonderful introduction, especially to the kids that are interested and haven't really had a chance to sit down and and play with some of these different paints, like in this case would be watercolors. And, and it's a great way to introduce our youth to that if they haven't even had and any exposure to it. Some of them have not. Many of us have piles of things we wanted to try, <laughs> and, and you go and invest, and there you have it, and you have fun, but you never use it up. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't turn out to be you, and then you find another material that you can't get enough of it. So come and try with us. Figure out what's the right thing for you. Let's see. Do you have any coming up? Oh, do you have any events coming up that will display some of the drawings of your students to the public? I can think Stockton Con's probably going to be well. That well, not formally, but I mean, like you can you draw your own. Look at your yeah. Look at each other's stuff. We have twice a year. We do have an open house and an art show. Oh, okay. So and and that we always display the work that was created in the six months right previous to that. Nice. So it, we when is the art show usually? They come up one a holiday art show in early December or sometime before you get too busy with the Christmas rush. Mm -hmm. And the other one is usually the end of June. Um, and we so you just had and, one recently. Yeah, then, huh? yeah, we just had one. Um, and those are open to the public. Now there's also a little art gallery within the Podesto Impact Center. And that's in the teen part. So that's open to teens all the time, mm -hmm. whenever we're open. And if anybody would like to come in and check out the show, I'm sure that they would be allowed to just stop at the oh, desk it, and say. Is it, it like a daily thing that's changed or it's, it's like a set group? It runs of, for a few months. Okay. And, and in fact, typically what we'll do is after our art show, we'll take some of the pieces from that art show and leave them on display for a few more months. And we will be having the Tony DeZuniga art show after Stockton Con. That'll come down and it'll go back up at the Teen Impact Center for a couple of months to just give more people a chance to see it. So right now that is inside the Teen Center and it's you have to really ask to get in. Sure, but we're hoping sure. to have some public hours mm -hmm. that would be open to everyone just to take advantage of that little gallery we're setting up. Does Tony Dezenuga's widow have a restaurant downtown? She does. Okay. It's, uh, it has it's orchids, I yeah, believe. Yeah, it's some okay. sort of orchid in the name. Yeah, Red, yeah. Red, black. I, I, I don't know the full well, name, but yeah. I've actually been in that restaurant, and he, she had like a smaller room sectioned off for all of his art. She was so sweet. She gave me a quick little tour of of that room and she showed me all of his artwork and in the room I think is maybe about twice the size of this one she's a really neat lady but I was like, totally honored to just be in there and it was it was pretty amazing I'm sure we're going to see some of that art at, yes. at Stockton Con as well um, yeah. Tina usually has a table with mm -hmm. a whole bunch of his art and yeah. then she's going to loan us one piece to show awesome. but awesome. yeah you can see a lot of his work and you can see many people with work inspired by his, because he took a lot of time to mentor other artists, and that's why we want to honor him. Yeah, yeah. So real quick, Kristen with JLI will be at Stockton Con August 19th and 20th. Yes. And also workshops coming up. Go to their website at jliacademy.org. And uh, they also have a Facebook page, which is uh, Jagged Lines of Imagination. You can like their page on Facebook. 
It should have all the up-to-date current information there as well. And so, again, I want to thank Kristen for being here today at lunch and <laughs> keeping us posted on what's going on over there at JLI, the Teen Impact Center. And then I'll be back next week with the show from 12 to 1, Breaking Barriers with Art. My name is Jocelyn. I'm your host, and I'm going to be signing off. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Jocelyn. What an opportunity. <laughs> thank you.